Welcome back. In this video, we're going to talk about riskless arbitrage covered interest parity. Now, I'm going to wait till the end of this subsection to explain what exactly this title means, okay? Because it requires um, some background information, which we will discuss in this video uh, to be able to understand this title, right? And um, here, let's consider the arbitrage of uh, deposits between the two currencies. Here is a very simple example. Suppose you get dollars in your pocket and is trying to compare the following two investment choices. A says the interest rate on the dollar deposit is 2%. So this means you probably find this 2% interest rate at Bank of America in New York, okay? So it's gonna it's expressed in dollars. You're gonna be paid in dollars. Choice B says the interest rate on a euro deposit is four percent. In other words, you can send your money to uh, euro, okay? Uh, let's say Paris, and um, you know open a bank account over there. Okay, or you can also do that, you know, here even in the United States. Okay, you can open a foreign exchange uh, account, okay, and put your money into that um, account. So here, uh, suppose the spot rate today is um, one dollar uh, per euro. Okay, just you know to simplify our uh, calculation then which choice yields a higher rate of return? This is what you need to figure out. Um, any other information is needed for you to make that uh, choice. Okay. Now here, uh, I would strongly uh, encourage you to pause the video and uh, do this by yourself. Okay. Based upon what we discussed in um, the previous videos and see if you can figure this out by yourself. All right. Now here, uh, let's walk through this uh, uh, together. Okay. For choice A, uh, a year later, one hundred dollars is expected to yield one hundred dollars times one plus two percent. So um, you're gonna receive one hundred two dollars, right? One hundred dollars principal plus two dollars interest payment, okay? And uh, it's pretty easy to figure out the rate of return. So you use what you, what you will receive in a year minus your principal, which is $100, divided by the principal. So the rate will be 2%, okay? Remember this rate here is um, calculated based upon the dollar amount, okay? All right. Uh, choice B, you have to, you know, um, the first step, you're going to um, exchange the, um, the dollars for euro, okay? And because the uh, spot rate is one to one, so uh, you're going to receive 100 euros today, okay? And then you put into that account... And after a year, you could get 104 euros. Again, 100 euros uh, is your principal, and, one, uh, and another 4 euros as the interest payment. Okay. Now here, uh, you can calculate the euro rate of return, but that won't be comparable with the 2% we already got up there, because that's based upon the dollar amount. Okay, um, to be able to compare, we have to find the dollar rate of return. Okay, so this is why, you know, on the previous slide, we ask you any other information you lead. So obviously here, we want to know how many dollars will that 104 euros be worth in a year. Okay, in other words, we need to know the exchange rate between the two currencies a year later, okay? This is exactly what we uh, introduced before 
It's so-called the forward exchange rate. Okay, so we'll use the uh, uppercase letter F instead of E here to remind ourselves this is a forward rate. Okay, now suppose the rate is 97 cents per euro. Okay, a year later. Again, the, the rate is already set in stone here okay, today, but you will deliver the currencies a year later. Okay, now we can calculate. Um, so 104 euros um, are worth um, 0.97 uh, times 104. So we end up with $100.88 a year later. All right. And now we can figure out the dollar rate of return, which is $100.88 minus $100. That's how much we begin with. Right, and divided it by one hundred dollars, so you find that this rate is 0.88 percent, which is smaller than this rate two percent offered by choice A. Right, obviously A yields a higher rate of return. A is better. Right. Okay. And um, see if you you know um, got the same uh, conclusion when you worked um, on your own, okay? Now here, we also want to uh, discuss an alternative way to find the dollar rate of return on euro deposits, okay? And the alternative way here is also an approximation. So let's uh, look at this one. The expected rate of appreciation or depreciation of the euro can be calculated uh, using the following way here, um, 0.97 minus 1 divided by 1. In other words, suppose we start with $1 a year later, as we said, it's going to be um, 97 cents per euro, right? So uh, here we find it's uh, minus 3%. The minus sign means it's a depreciation of the euro, okay? So the euro is worth less a year later, 3% less specifically, right? And then here, we're going to say the dollar rate of return on the euro deposits approximately equals the interest rate on the euro deposits adjusted by the expected rate of appreciation or depreciation of the euro, all right? Now, in this case, specifically, uh, the interest rate offered uh, for the euro deposit is 4%, right? And when we make the adjustment based upon the appreciation or depreciation, we said it's minus 3%, so we end up with 1%. Remember, on the previous slide, we said that, you know, precisely, it should be 0.88%, right? So this is close enough, we believe. Okay. Once again, it's a, a uh, it's approximation here. Okay. Now, in general, uh, we can derive the following uh, formula or mathematical expression for the dollar rate of return on euro deposit. Okay. Now, the first part, R um, euro, this simply means um, you know the uh, interest rate offered on the euro deposit okay or the return from the euro deposit the second part would be the appreciation or depreciation so we use a forward rate minus the spot rate divided by the spot rate okay so this is just going to be a percentage of um, change in the value of um, euro here all right now um in this example, we find that you know the return rate uh, from the dollar deposit is greater than the return rate from the euro deposit adjusted for uh, depreciation of the euro, right? So the left-hand side is greater than the right-hand side. Then we already said that the investors uh, would choose the dollar deposit, right? Now think about this on the market. If you know many investors, if not all, 
uh, go with the dollar deposit, obviously uh, the demand for U.S. dollars rises, and so the dollar appreciates, right? And uh, the demand for euro rise. Um, I'm sorry, it should be here. It's a typo. The demand for euro should fall, and so the euro depreciates, okay? Because of the investor's choice on the market. Now, remember, these two lives are basically the same thing, right? It's two sides of the same coin, okay? Uh, because, you know, when USD appreciates, that means uh, you are the euro depreciates, okay? When we, you know, treat these two currencies. Now, when you go up here in the formula, you would find that um, when euro depreciates, then this uh, exchange rate, okay, um, like in the units of dollars per euro, this guy becomes smaller. So the denominator would be smaller. And um, on the top, the numerator, this guy becomes smaller as well, okay, because it's the same thing. And for a given Forward, uh, forward rate. So uh, if this guy is the same, then the difference would be larger. So here we find a larger numerator and smaller denominator. Altogether, this ratio would be larger. Okay. So if this ratio gets larger, and uh, this process would continue until the two sides are equal. Okay. Because remember, at the beginning, the left-hand side is greater than the right-hand side altogether, right? And then, because of the investor's choice, the right-hand side would become larger and larger till the two sides are equal, okay? Now, um, I would ask you guys to drive the opposite side by yourself. So the opposite side means, you know, the left-hand side is less than the right-hand side, okay? And then you are trying to figure out, you know, what's going on on the market and how the two sides uh, would achieve, um, you know, the, the equal um, condition, okay? Um, so here we're, we can, you know, with this uh, equation, we can define the interest parity, okay? We're going to see when the market is clear, in other words, at the equilibrium, then the deposits in all currencies are equally desirable assets. Again, look at the here. Uh, the investors would be indifferent between the dollar deposit and the euro deposit, right? So the arbitrage in the foreign exchange market um, uh, is not possible, okay? It's not worth doing anything, okay? And um, so on the basis of this interest parity, we can define covered interest parity, CIP. Now, this is so-called a, a covered interest parity because all exchange rate risk on the euro side has been covered by the use of the forward contract, okay? Remember, we said that the forward contract means um, the buyers and sellers already agreed this rate, okay, uh, when the two currencies are delivered a year later, okay, but the, the rate has already been determined today, okay. So no matter how high or how low, you know, the um, values of the currencies would change, that means the exchange rate uh, risk, then it won't affect your uh, rate of return, okay? If you use the forward contract, okay? Or use the forward rate, okay? All right, so that's all um, about this uh, subsection, okay? Now, uh, I guess you can understand the title now, right? And the riskless arbitrage means, you know, because it's um, protected, you, you uh, are protected, uh, from the exchange rate risk. So that's why it's called the riskless.